So we've seen here that we have a variety of themes that we can work with, and um, we've done a lot of work so far today, changing settings and adding pages and posts and such. I don't want to have to do that over again next time, so what we're going to do is uh, look at my fourth instruction sheet, and like I said, if you've got instruction number four, this will help us. Um, instruction number four is in two parts. We'll get back to three, of course, but if you look at instruction at number four, you have a section archiving your site, and then we've got resurrect your site. So we need to do two things. We need to make an archive of our site, because we saw that when we copied the WordPress software, into the WW folder, it was, at the beginning of the day, it was about 1,300 files. After setting it all up, this tells me that it's now 1,800 files. So all of those files we need to copy to our drive, but we cannot simply drag this WordPress folder to our, to our flash drive and then put it back next week, because then this doesn't include the database. The database is what includes the users and the passwords and the products and the blog posts and everything. So that's why I've got these instructions here. We're going to follow these together to make a perfect copy of our site. Then you can take that copy with you if you brought a flash drive. If you didn't, I will give you a copy of mine next week. When we come back next week, we'll do resurrect your site. You're welcome to try the resurrect part at your home computer. Whatever we did today, you can try to bring it back to life at your home computer. And this is a way also to take, let's say you've got a real live victor.com on the internet, and I want to make a copy of it to work on WAMP. I would do the same thing. I would do these steps on my victor.com site, make the archive, and resurrect it in, in WAMP. So we will do this together next time, but right now we're going to do this first part. We should still be inside of WordPress, and from the menu, we're going to look at this in more detail later, but we've got an item called Plugins. We've got Plugins. If you, if you hover over Plugins, let's select Add New. Plugins basically are extra features to add to WordPress. WordPress is great out of the box, it's very powerful, but it can't do everything. For example, out of the box, it cannot sell products, because not everyone needs to do that. So WordPress would be much bigger and slower um, for people that don't need e-commerce. So plugins fill in the gaps to uh, make the site more robust, more, with more features. So plugins are similar to themes in that there are free themes and paid themes. And themes and plugins often come from third-party companies. The automatic company is the company behind WordPress. So automatic or WordPress, they publish some plugins and some themes, but most of the time they're coming from different companies, from big companies, small companies, people in their garage building themes and, and plugins. And there's a whole ecosystem, a whole cottage industry of people selling themes and plugins and so forth. The plugin that we want, according to my instructions, is a plugin called Duplicator. So within this screen, we have Featured, Popular, Recommended, Favorites, Search. Let's search Duplicator. Press Enter. There's many plugins out there that will make a copy of your site. This particular one that I like has perfect five stars <clears throat> out of 924 reviews, half a million installations, it was updated a week ago, it's compatible with our current version. This one over here, for example, Duplicator Cloner Migrator, <clears throat> two and a half stars out of seven reviews, it's barely on a thousand installations. So this is how you can choose the right plugin, because let's say later you want to integrate Twitter with your site. If you search Twitter, you're going to get 5,000 plugins. How do you know the good ones? Look at their star ratings, 
and the number of ratings and the number of installations and how old it is. Because plugins that are six months old, nine months old, 24 months old might not be a good idea to download even if they've got a lot of stars. Because perhaps those older plugins are more vulnerable. This is code. Code can be hacked, exploited. People can break into your site. If that code has not been updated in six months, nine months, twelve months, maybe someone figured out a way to break into the code and break into your site. So that's why you want plugins that have been updated relatively recently. One month is good, three months is okay, but six months, I'm starting to feel a little iffy. If it hasn't been updated in a year, I wouldn't get it. Who knows? Someone might have figured out a way to break into WordPress sites with that plugin, and the author never fixed it. Because again, these are not coming oftentimes from the official WordPress company. This one is coming from WP Developers Club and Tanya. And Tanya hasn't been updating it. So, even though it's got perfect five stars, it's only got three ratings. Obviously from the author and his brothers. <laughs> and Tanya. So, here's another one that's pretty high up there. Eight star, I mean eight reviews and so forth. But the point is, there's many ways to back up your site. This is one of them. I like it. I use it all the time in my company for clients. It's not the most automated version. There's other ones that will automatically make a copy and save to Dropbox and send you an email and all this cool stuff. But oftentimes those are not for free. This one for free works very well. Really good reviews, Life in the Grid, they, they do good work. They do sell a paid version that does give you extra features, such as automatic backups and so forth. This one is manual. When you want a backup, you run the backup. Other versions, it will do it for you every week. So you always have a copy every week or month or whatever. Plugins, they're extra features for WordPress. This is the one I'm recommending, Duplicator by Life in the Grid. Go ahead and click Install Now. It's going to connect again to the WordPress homepage. Install it. Remember to activate it. You can have many plugins, but you have to activate them to use them. You can have many plugins and many of them activated. It's not like a theme where only one theme is active at all times. You can have many plugins active at once. The downside, of course, is if you've got lots of plugins, it might slow down your site. If you've got three plugins all about Twitter, all trying to do the same thing, that's going to slow down your site. And I just noticed on my handout, I'm mentioning version 0 0.530, and they released 3.4. So don't worry if the version is different. It's just that this is the latest version, and my handout is a little out of date. Version 5.3.0. And we got the latest one, 5.3.4. Remember to activate the plugin. So now we have a brand new feature on our site, the way to back up our site to make a perfect copy, to duplicate it so that we can migrate it from one server to another, let's say. But the thing about plugins is that there's no consensus on how to develop a plugin, specifically where do we get the features of your brand new plugin? Because some plugins add themselves inside of the plugins menu, installed plugins, you will see settings. You will see settings here. There's settings here, for example. So some plugins have their settings inside the plugin screen. Some plugins perhaps end up in the tools screen. Some go into the settings screen. This one gives its own menu item, gives itself its own menu item, duplicated. That wasn't there before. So when we talk about other plugins a little later, I'll recommend about five or six that I really recommend. We're going to see that some go in here and some go in there, and it's kind of a mess. But there, I'll be talking about the useful plugins, like this one. My instructions further say, okay, uh, you now have a new dashboard item, duplicator. Click it. We have duplicator, a bunch of settings and such. Packages. Packages are backups of your site. Packages are the archive of the site, the copy of your site. 
uh, in total. And at the moment, we have no packages. We have no, we have no backups. So my instructions say, click the Create New tab at the top, at the top right. Create new. We're going to create a new backup. There's various things that we can change, but all of the defaults are fine. For example, this is about to make a backup with today's date and the name of the site. You can change that if you want, but I recommend to leave this name because it puts it in this order, which for many of us, we're used to writing the date like this, 11-09-2015. But it's more recommended to write the date like this. Display the year first, and then the month, and then the date. Because when you have a bunch of these backed up, when you have a bunch of these saved on your flash drive, if you save them in the order of month first, date, then year, in the list it's going to show you all of the Novembers grouped together. So all the Novembers of 2014 and 2013 and 2016 are all going to be grouped together. All the Novembers. Because that's the first thing in the file name, 11. But if we keep it the default 2015, 1109, all of the 2015 backups will be kept together. This is basic computer storage. It's all alphabetical, right? All your documents. All the A documents are first, and then the Bs and the Cs, etc. When it comes to numbers, it groups them in the order of the number. So all the 11s are going to be grouped together, and all the 13s, and all the sixes and such, and they may not really line up chronologically. So all of that just to say that this default name here, I would leave it. Because when we save this to your flash drive, all the 2015 11s will be saved together. Next year, all the 2016s will be saved together. Might not matter to you, but as you do this, and you have these backups of your site, you'll see it's important. I'm not going to change anything there. You can if you want to. In the previous page, sorry about that. Do you have the plugins for all the duplicate areas and the other ones for a directory? Did we mark any of those boxes? No. No, we were just seeing. I just going to apply it. Apply it. There shouldn't be anything to apply. It should say activate. I did. Yeah, so if you activated it, you can just go to the duplicator screen. So I'm not going to change the, uh, the file name here, but if you'd like to, you've got a notes. You can add your own note right here, notes. This is optional and this is a note because if we do this for a client, we make backups on a regular basis, and this is a good spot to add a note. This, this archive, this backup, didn't have an update. We can add a note. This one, we add a new, a new product. We could add the note. To do for next time, add the contact form. So these notes are totally optional, but I'm going to use it for notes. I'm going to write here, um, what are the things we did today? We, um, added two new menus. Added a new theme. Oh, set the static home page. We added a post and a page. Added post slash pages page. So just notes. What did, what's in this backup? This is good here. If you think of anything else, go ahead and add it. But we definitely need a name, note is optional, and all of these extra options are optional. On the right side, click the Next button. It's going to scan the server, it's going to scan the site, and everything should say good. The server is good, PHP is good, WordPress is good, blah blah blah. Files, the number of files in the site, it's 31.8 megabytes, yours may be more or less, that's okay. Then here, more importantly, the database. The database is good. 
It's about 992 kilobytes, which is less than one megabyte. Everything looks good. Did anyone not get any goods here? All right, if something didn't come out good, you might have warning and you might have error. Warning is we can still proceed. We just have to be careful. And error means you can't proceed. You have to fix it. So hopefully no one got errors or warnings. Question? Yeah, I, I'm a little confused on this process. So if you had more than one 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 site in, in their folder, in, that, in your... your WAM folder. In your WAM folder, right. Mm -hmm. How did, It automatically defaulted to the site, or this, this Victor Bakery. Um, do you normally have to choose... I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused how it moved where, where, which, when, uh, where we were looking for. Or and do you we have to add duplicator into every site that we Yes. You have to add is. you have to add the duplicator plugin to every site because right now we're only editing the Victor's Bakery site. If I wanted to back up the amazing website, I have to log into the amazing website, add duplicator, and then back that one up. So you're saying what, what's that what's obvious is that if you paid for forty dollars for du for a, a, a plugin for Victor's Bakery, we'd have to pay it again. We couldn't use that same plugin for another site that we built. I have to check because every theme and plugin author is different. So perhaps the forty dollars does cover three sites or five sites. I, I don't know. I haven't checked it recently. Usually we use the free one and it does what we need. The paid one has extra features that we haven't really needed, but I think there's a package in there that you can pay some amount to cover ten sites. Oh, okay. So, so it's like a license. Then. It's like it's like a license, but. Uh, yeah, I would, um, when you download any particular plugin, perhaps under help, for example, that'll explain all the details. Okay, thank you. So everything looks good on my server. Let's click build. That is then going to look in every folder of the site and make a, make a copy. It's going to look in the database and make a backup of everything in the database. And then eventually, it'll say package completed. It took about nine seconds. We have this installer file in the archive. The whole site, which a moment ago said it was 38 megabytes, I think, it compressed it down to 13. So that big site compressed down, smaller, and it gives us two files, installer and archive. My instructions say, uh, scan, then build. If it fails, read the notes. Um, after the build is complete, you will get two files, an installer and an archive. Click to download the installer and archive files. One is called installer.php and contains instructions to resurrect your site. The other might be called something 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 dot zip and contains all the media, pages, posts, etc. Do not unzip this file. Move both files into a new folder named today's date, for example. So both of these files are necessary for us next week or at home when we want to bring the site back to life. We're going to get a zip file, which includes everything, but you don't want to unzip it. You want to keep it zipped up. A zip file is a bunch of files compressed into one. This installer file, next week we'll use it to unzip that for us and put everything in its place and bring the site back to life. We don't do anything with these really except inside of WAMP. That's what we're going to look at next time. We're going to resurrect our site. We're going to use that installer file to bring the site back to life. If you're trying to do it at home, I would recommend to try it at home because we'll do it together next time, but it's good practice for you to practice. So for all intents and purposes right now, we've got a backup of the site. I want to plug in my flash drive, and then I want to click these to download them and move them to my flash drive. So I'm going to click Installer. It may ask you, depending on your browser, it may simply download it, or it may give you a pop-up that says, would you like to save it or open it? Click Save. I'm going to click the same thing for Archive. It just downloaded it. You, it might ask you, save it or open it? Click Save and it'll probably save it to the desktop. If the web browser asks you to, then you can. If it doesn't, it'll probably go to your desktop and then you just move it. 
So let me confirm. What's that? What what does the option say? Say that again? Yes. Yeah, exactly. If it if it gives you that one, click the save as and then you can ch select your flash drive. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I have um, I missed your instruction. Open, save, open or save, which one do you do? Open or save. We're going to save it so that you can keep a copy of it. Okay. Uh, you don't want to open it because it doesn't have anything useful. Okay. Yes. No, so, go ahead. Uh, you wanted us to save the archive file and the installer? Because Definitely. You need both the installer okay. and the archive. Well, I picked and the archive. went directly to the downloads folder. Okay, it went to downloads. When I picked the archive, it didn't give me the uh, save option. It neither did mine. It, like I said, the web browser might automatically just save it, or it might ask you. So Do mine. You have another option to look for it on the uh, desktop or something. On the desktop or the downloads. So on my downloads, there it is. There's installer.php and there's the zip file. It's got the little zip, the little zipper. Both of those, I need to take with me. I need to take them onto my flash drive. What I would recommend is when you find those two files, they either went to your desktop or maybe the downloads folder, what I would recommend is make a new folder, put today's date, and put both of them into that folder. Because next time we're going to make another backup and I want to keep those files in their own folder with next week's date. I'm going to make a folder here with today's date and the zip file and the installer I'm going to put it into that folder and that I will put into my flash drive. I'm also going to put a copy in the network folder in case you want a copy of my work. You need to find on your computer either the downloads folder or the desktop is where the files ended up. I'm going to help people individually in just one moment. Well, every time we come in here, yes, we're going to do it again so that we get comfortable with it and we're going to make a copy of our site because when we leave this room everything will erase. That's the whole point of doing this backup. Oh, on your own personal? You don't need to do this at all because your computer doesn't erase, doesn't reset like ours. You just keep working on it. You can make a backup uh, for safety as well, yes. You could. Um, it's safer uh, to keep the backups until you know you don't need them. Um, and that's up to you to decide how long to wait. Uh, ladies? Ladies, you're being a little loud there. That seems a long time. I would be maybe one year at the most. But it really depends on yourself. Um, but that's why this version of the plugin is very ma manual. We have to do the backup when we choose. The paid version, I believe we can set a schedule, and it'll do it for us. That way we, we eliminate some, uh, some user error, perhaps. So we're going to end the main lecture at this point and have a little bit of lab time just to make sure that everyone copied their work. Everyone's going to be a little bit different. 
but the big idea is that using instruction number four, I've made a copy of my site, I've copied it to my flash drive, and I'm also going to add it to the network folder so that when we come back next week, if you forgot your work, if you didn't, if you weren't able to do this, you can still take my work and and, and get started with my site so that you're not behind. So in the network folder, I just put my copy of the work to it if you like what I did. So general questions. All right, so we'll have a little bit of lab time, and uh, we'll do it again next time.